We will have a look at the fires that happened in Bolivia in August and September 2019. They caused a loss of land of 5 million hectares and they affected 4,472 families. So we're looking at the Santa Cruz district here in Bolivia and we will run a burn severity monitoring for the time period as mentioned. But before we go into the burn severity monitoring, we will have a look at already known data sets, which we addressed before, the firm's data and the CCI burned area data sets. Let's have a look at the data sets that are already in Google Earth Engine on fire monitoring. So one is the firm's data set and the other one is the CCI data set based on MODIS. So the firms one, we simply type in firms and we can already get the information here. You get a little description on the data set. You can see the data availability. So for example, since 2000, we have information and you get information about the different bands. So for example, here we have three bands. One is T21, one is confidence and one is the line number. For us, most important is T21, so the brightness temperature of the fire pixel using the modest channel 2122, and units is K, like Kelvin. So have a look at the example script here, when a new window simply opens and showing the example script. So this is now for an area actually in Washington state, but we are interested in Bolivia, Santa Cruz district, which is why we add the coordinates now to our data set. So here the set center is coordinates still from Washington state. We simply add a point here and can copy the coordinates. and add them here. Additionally, we need to adjust the time frame. So we're interested here in August until September 2019. And we let the script run. And you can clearly here see already the severity. So we already defined this T21, so which was the band giving us information about the brightish, brightness temperature in Kelvin. When we go here to the inspector, you can also just click into the area and here you get the information about the values. So we can do the same thing actually for the CCI data. So this is the fire CCI data. We again have a look at the data set. We can have a look at the different bands on the burn date, the confidence level, also land cover information with the different land cover classes you see here. And we again simply use the example script. So again, we adjust the times. And we add our map center. I still have the coordinates copied. And just adjust the zoom level, click run. And then you can get the information of the CCI fire data for the area of interest, just defined with our coordinates. And again, you can use the inspector, just click into the data set, and you can get the information on the burn date here, for example. So let's now start with the burn severity monitoring for the fires. For this, we first need to define the start and the end of the 
change detection we want to make. You remember that we actually calculate the burn ratio from an image before and after and then subtract it from each other. So first we define the pre-period. So we call it here the pre-fire. Pre-fire start and pre-fire end is here in July and the post-fire start, post-fire end, so the time after the fire occurred is here from October until mid-October, so 1st October until 15th. For this case study, we use Sentinel-2 data. So actually we use the plant form Sentinel-2, um, the collection Copernicus Sentinel-2, and um, yeah, we also just put a print function so that you can actually also see um, what is the data selected for the analysis and the fire incidents occurred from when to when in the console. So it's just printed again. So we select the Sentinel-2 imagery by time and location here. So first we address the images, which are the image collection here, which we already defined. And then we go to the pre-fire collection filter it by date and filter it by our area, our area of interest, which was Santa Cruz district. Then we also do the same with the post fire image. So we filter it by date and we filter it by the area of interest. And afterwards we add the clipped images to the console on the right, where you can also see the different image collection that is included here in the pre-fire and the post-fire images. And then we need to apply a cloud mask. So cloud and snow mask actually. So we defined our cloud mask with this function. Um, we added actually um, the cloud mask that is all already predefined for Sentinel-2 here. We added the, or we looked at the bits of 10 and 11 which are cloud and series to then exclude them actually or mask them from the final images. We also got the pixel quality band which you can see here and masked out the areas. To apply these cloud masks we simply put the function in here and further on we had to mosaic and clip the images to the study area. So the important step here was to mosaic the images because we had the images that were included, which were not just one, they were mosaic. The cloud mask was applied before so that we have a very good image and mosaic for our area of interest. So we did this for the pre and post images without the cloud mask and to the pre and post images with the cloud mask. So just have a look how this looks like. So this is our pre-fire image, but without a cloud mask. So you can definitely see several clouds, especially in this area. Let's have a look at the pre-fire with the clouds mask. Then you can clearly see that there are many clouds masked as well. And the same of course is for the post-fire image and the cloud mask post-fire image. 